it's hard as a it's hard as a spectator, and that's what I am. When the game start, I'm a spectator. Not anything I can do, and I, I compare it to being a parent watching your kids play. Because when your kids play, you know you worry about everything, and you want them to do well, and there's not anything you can do about it. So you know you sit there and fret over it, uh, and that's pretty much the position I'm in. Uh, once we go out on the field, that. Uh, you have to have confidence in the guys that you put out there and that uh, that they're capable of uh, doing what you hope we can do, and that's a win. And, uh, you know, they got us there, and so uh, it uh, uh, you just have to hope that uh, that uh, they continue to play well. How special was it to win that night in Tampa and then to come home to see how everybody was dealing about it? Well, you know, uh, it, was, it was really neat to win that first uh, series and come home. Uh, play the Yankees because uh, our record in postseason as a ball club hadn't been good at all. We had only won one game and and so uh, I think uh, there was that stigma that uh, we might not be able to win in, in postseason and so to get past that first series was was big for us and then to get past the Yankees was even bigger. So uh, what do you remember about that night when we going to win independence. Well when we when we beat the Yankees at home uh, I consider that one of the top five uh, highlights of my career and it was just from being there and being involved in the organization and experiencing that uh, I think anybody that was in that stadium that was a Ranger fan uh, really felt like that was a very special sports moment in their life and that's the way I looked at it. When, when did you, uh, was there a point you decided you were interested in running a franchise? Oh you know I think oh, second <laughs> I think the second half of my career, uh, I thought, you know, I might want to get involved in the, the uh, business side of baseball and, and uh, be involved in management and help set the direction of an organization. Because I think as a player, you feel like that you start getting some understanding of that. But uh, now that I look back on it, uh, I think uh, what your views as a player are, and then once you're in that position, are, are totally different. And so it's it, it was it's been a uh, a big education for me. Uh, I've really enjoyed the challenge of it, and I have really enjoyed uh, being in this position. Your philosophy was just is just to hire good people. Well, you have to. You know, you uh, you can't micromanage, so you have to try to put the best people you can in, in uh, as many positions as you can and uh, let them do their job and support them uh, and uh, hope that things go right. And, uh, you know, we, uh, there were a lot of good people in the organization when I came here, and I think that uh, uh, today we're even a stronger organization, and uh, we all have a philosophy, and that is to uh, develop from within our system and then add where we need to uh, uh, on a year-to-year -year basis if we're able to and so uh, I don't think we, uh, we've wavered from that and so uh, uh, that's pretty much the philosophy of Texas Rangers. Did you ever think you'd run the Astros? Well you know obviously growing up here and, and my interest level in the Astros was uh, uh, high because as a childhood uh, being in Houston and, and uh, then following the Colt 45s and the Astros and then being able to play here for nine years uh, uh, when I came here as an Astro, I really thought I'd retire as an Astro and and uh, didn't anticipate uh, going to the Rangers. But once I went up there and stayed five years, a lot of neat things have happened to me. And so uh, uh, my association with the Metroplex of the Texas Rangers is, uh, has been very special. What challenges do you think Jim Crane and his group will face once they finally take over the Astros? Well, I think that uh, Jim is uh, the mindset from what I've heard is that he's uh, going to try to build a ball club through his, his uh, farm system. And so I think he's going to have some uh, uh, challenges uh, of uh, uh, being patient and signing players and giving them the opportunity to develop. And you don't do that overnight. Uh, as uh, we've found out with our organization, you know, you get uh, players in your system, you have to keep putting people in the pipeline because you're going to have all type of things that happen from injuries to uh, uh, misvaluations to players not performing. And so there's a uh, tremendous fallout rate uh, on players that you bring into your system. And so you have to try to keep uh, adding people as much as you can and, and uh, try to 
not have a void in the system. From your standpoint as a person who's now in management, what do you say to the fans in Houston who are looking at this team right now and they're like, what happened? After, you know, well, I think ago. that, you know, a lot of clubs go through this and, and uh, the Astros are going through a period right now. But I think for the fans, I think they should look at the young players coming up and being supportive of them and, and understanding that uh, these are cycles that organizations go through and it just happens to be one that the Astros are in right now. Well, wait, what was your initial reaction when you heard about the sale of the team? I mean, it had been a near sale, I guess, while you were still here. Well, I was, uh, I was surprised that that, uh, uh, that Drayton chose to sell the ball club because I really didn't think that was probably uh, what he wanted to do, but I think he's at the point in his life that uh, that wasn't uh, something boys had an interest in, so I, I think it makes sense that he does doing what he's doing. So uh, uh, from that standpoint, it doesn't surprise me. But uh, I really uh, think that the Astros have been a, a tremendous part of Drayton's life and his uh, uh, not only his personal life but his business life. So uh, I think it was a tough decision on him. Noah, how much satisfaction has it had what you're doing? It's working it last year and working again. Well, you know. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot, and uh, uh, you know it's it's uh, fun to be able to be in first place. But uh, also, you know, it doesn't keep you worrying about the the things that you see and and uh, concern yourself with as far as uh, being a better ball club and, and continuing to improve. The pressure to stay there, it's uh, never goes away. Does. No, you know it's a challenge. It's a year-to-year -year deal, and uh, just because. Uh, but what we did last year that we have to approach uh, each year the same with the same intensity and and uh, basically analyze your ball club and see what you have to do to to try to improve it and, and stay on top. Why does it seem like the older you get, the busier you get? I don't know, but that's a true statement. And uh, you know, I thought I was going to be retired and have all this time on my hands, but that's just the opposite. How important is that to you that you that you are staying busy? Well, I think it's a unique opportunity uh, that I have and get to do what I'm doing. Very few people get to do that, and so I feel very fortunate for that, and, and I enjoy it, and I think that's the, the most important thing is that you enjoy what you're doing. What do you think about the Astros and Rangers playing in the same division? Well, you know, I wouldn't be against that at all because it puts somebody else in our division and our time, in our time zone, and I think that's important. You know, we're to a disadvantage from our TV uh, audience and, and uh, our travel by having to go west. And so uh, uh, I would be in favor of adding somebody. Um, and I think it would be good. I think if you had the Astros and the Rangers in a pennant race, I think it'd stimulate a lot of interest in the state, and I think that would be good. So you're for the realignment? Well, some, some form of it. Well, I, I'm, uh, if we can improve our situation with Texas Rangers, we'd certainly be open to it. You said somebody, but the Astros, as Richard said, point it seems like an obvious thing. That seems like it would make the rivalry. If they're, if they're, if they're well, it, you know, it would make uh, it would make the rivalry in the state such a, a big deal. And and I think that uh, with the demographics in the state of Texas, I think it'd be good for baseball. Mr. Ryan, are you looking to make any moves? Or Oh, no, we're always trying to improve our ball club. So, uh, as I said earlier, we'll, uh, we're will we always looking to see what might be available and what we might be able to do, but it's hard to predict. You know, we don't have a, a deal pending right now. Is, uh, is the bullpen your biggest need right now? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to say because we have uh, – uh, Hunter and O'Day and, and uh, Feldman coming back, and so it gives us some flexibility of uh, what we might do uh, with the starting rotation or with the bullpen. You know, it's just it's hard to say. Do you think Ogando should go back to the bullpen? I wouldn't say that. I think he'll obviously give him another start, but uh, we know he can pitch out of the bullpen and be important to us out of the bullpen, but uh, he's been. Uh, uh, awfully important to us as a starter this year too. So uh, I think predicting that he'll go back to bullpen would be premature. Uh, 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 you know, obviously uh, when uh, those other guys get back and we see how they're performing, we'll we'll have some decisions to make.
know much stuff about Neil Adams and Astros major in the Rangers division. How realistic is that thought, or is it? Is it you look at kind of like a trial balloon that's just kind of being floated out? Well, you know, I hadn't heard a whole lot about it. The only, the only thing I've heard about it was in the media. Uh, I haven't heard anything at the meetings about it, so I don't know um, uh, how serious people are about that. So I think it's one of those deals that uh, uh, that seed got planted and it's grown, and, and we'll see where it goes because I, I don't have anything to. to uh, uh, base it off of any more than what I've read in the paper. Do you think of Vigio's chances getting the ball and joining you there in a couple of years? Oh, I think they're probably good. You look at his numbers and, and uh, look at his career overall, I think it, uh, he stands a good chance. Just from since we've got you here, what's your thoughts on the, uh, the situation out in LA with the Dodgers and that fiasco? Oh, you know, I'm not really uh, up on that any more than y'all are from what I read in the paper. and. Uh, yeah. Anytime you go to bankruptcy, you don't want to do that. And then if you're in bankruptcy, uh, uh, it's in the judge's hands. And where it goes from there, you know, who knows? You know, if you'd have told me uh, last year that we were going to have an auction after we had an agreement, uh, I would have never thought that. And so you don't know where uh, bankruptcy will take you. And, uh, you know, it's strictly in the judge's hands. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. Did you ever think you'd see that franchise, though, especially of all Well, you know, when I was a player, that was probably the marquee franchise in baseball. And it's, it's kind of sad to see where they've gone and, and the problems they have. Uh, but hopefully that uh, they'll get those issues worked out and they'll become the uh, franchise they once were. That was stressful last summer for you personally, wasn't it? Not knowing how it was going to come out, whether you, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I tell people the day of the auction uh, was one of the worst days of my life because I really thought uh, when Cuban and Jim Crane teamed up, I really thought they would get the ball club bought. And so I went there that day uh, not expecting us to uh, end up with the ball club and, and having a um, uh, our situation changed. I really thought that uh, my days were probably limited with the ball club, and, and uh, I was uh, concerned about uh, our personnel and, and what would happen from there on. And so uh, it was a, a very strange day indeed. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's something that you hope you don't experience again. Long day. Yeah.